Hi, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a long awaited update to the HK 132nd scale Lancaster. Uh, it's been a while since I've worked on this. The last video I posted, which was the interior, was back in June. Uh, that's partly because I've been taking a break from the kit. It was uh, starting to frustrate me a bit, so I put it on the back burner. And it's also partly because a lot of the work that I have done has been filling and sanding and filling and sanding. And that doesn't make for the most exciting video. So in this video, I'm going to give you an update on the small bits of construction that I have done. And then I'm going to move on to putting paint onto the aircraft. So if you haven't seen my previous videos, you can click the link in the top right corner now. And they cover building the engines, building the tail of the aircraft and building the interior, including the air scale uh, instrument upgrade kit for the cockpit. So this is how I left the aircraft at the end of the last video and I had decided that the part side of the aircraft would be in the opaque fuselage parts with the engines closed up and the starboard side would be in the clear fuselage parts and the two engines on the starboard side would be open to some degree to see that detail inside. And so one decision I had to make was how to attach that starboard outer engine, engine number four, uh, to the wing while still showing some of the interior parts. The engine encasement for engine 4 is these two parts here and you can see that if you put them in place it hides the oil um, reservoir inside there and I want that to be visible. So what I decided to do was to modify this part here and basically just to cut away a section of this piece along the panel lines as if the panel has been removed by engineers and maintenance staff. And here is the result of that, and you can see it just opens it up nicely and you can get a little peek in the back. And here is the starboard wing, this is engine number four, and you can see the modified engine casing I've got. The engine will slot inside. But before I do that, I need to paint inside there with an interior green. So here you can see the part wing in its constructed state. Both the engines are on, propellers are not on yet, and you can see there's quite a lot of filling and sanding that I've had to do here for those gaps. And I'm sure that once I put a coat of primer on this, it will need a little bit more sanding and filling as well. Flaps are in place. They're a little bit delicate. There are just a couple more pieces to add to the engines. I'm not actually sure what these are, but there's one on either side of each engine. They look like possibly some kind of intake. And you can see here that once you put that round disc on for the propeller, all of that engine detail is lost anyway. One of the other questions I had at the end of my previous video was how I was going to paint the clear parts. Whether I was going to leave them entirely clear, whether I was going to partially paint them, or even if I was going to use just the opaque parts but cut holes in them. Um, I've decided to go for the clear parts with selective painting, and so I did a few experiments with the clear parts from the part side, which I'm not going to use in the kit, uh, just to make sure that the Tamiya acrylics adhere properly to the clear parts and to make sure that the, the masking and everything uh, will work without any nasty um, mistakes on those clear parts. So here is the result of a quick test and you can see actually the masking has come out quite nicely. Uh, one thing that you can't tell so well on the video is that the nose of the aircraft here on the left has been painted in XF69 NATO black and the section on the right has been painted in XF1 black and black looks a lot better to me than the NATO black. The NATO black is just not quite dark enough. At first I thought I'd go for NATO black because uh, of the scale effect. I thought that pure black might be just too dark, but it actually seems that it is too light if it's just NATO black on its own. So with that in mind, it was time to start painting, or at least planning how to paint it. Uh, the wings are no problem whatsoever. The wings and the tail plane will be left off and they'll be painted separately. Uh, they're designed to be removed and reattached, that's not a problem. For the two fuselage halves, I've decided that I'm going to paint them as much as I can separately. 
and then I'm going to join them and touch up. Now I know that causes a potential problem because obviously when you join the two halves together there's clearly going to be a seam line, it will need some sanding I'm sure, uh, top and bottom, and that's going to require touch up definitely. Uh, but nevertheless I think that disadvantage is outweighed by the advantages. I think if I put the two halves together now and start trying to paint them, this is such a big aircraft, it's going to get knocked. Uh, it's got so many windows that have to be inserted, the turrets have to be inserted when you close it all up. And my big fear is if I close it all together and start painting it, I'm going to knock it on something, I'm going to break a turret, or worse, I'm going to loosen a, a window or something, it's going to fall off inside, and then I'm really going to be stuck, so I'm going to have to pry the whole thing apart to get that, that piece back again. It's worth remembering that the clear parts will need painting on the inside and the outside, just like the opaque parts. So the plan will be to paint the entire fuselage in black, doing a black base. Uh, once that's done, then I will glue the two halves together, then I'll deal with any seams. The underside seams should be easy to deal with because I'll just go over them in black. And again on the top, although the camouflage will go on top, I'll just go back over the seam in black again first and then put the camouflage on the two combined halves. What could go wrong? Okay, so here is a quick plan of how I'm going to paint the clear parts. Um, I noticed actually the uh, part side, I've just flipped the image uh, because I couldn't find a picture of the starboard side. Um, I'm going to paint the lower half of the clear part in black, basically from the joint underneath up to the level of the floor. And the reason I'm doing that is because there's no detail under the floor anyway, so it makes sense to bring that black around. And at the back of the bomb bay, the, that level has to drop down a little bit because that's where the step down is into the rear section of the aircraft. And then, and you'll have to excuse my drawing here, the uh, camouflage section is going to come down to the normal level that the camouflage will come down to on the other side as well. So the dark earth and RAF green is going to be normal, even on the clear parts. And you can see there, there's a tiny part of the wing which actually is embedded on the fuselage part, so that will need some camo on the top of that as well. And at the back of the aircraft, I'm putting a little bit of black just a little bit further up there. That's going to cover those um, attachment points for the tailplane, and also just to cover up that little attachment point that I showed you earlier for the uh, parachute as well. Now one thing which I will also need to do is actually paint the interior of the clear parts uh, where there's paint on the exterior. So for example at the top here if I do the brown and green camouflage on top obviously looking into the aircraft and looking up you're going to see the underside of that brown and green paint through the clear part which I don't want so I'm going to have to paint the interior there green. And equally with the floor the floor at the rear doesn't take up the whole width of the fuselage so if you look down through the floor you would just see the back of the black paint that's on the underside. So I need to paint that part green as well uh, so you look down and see green rather than seeing black. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay and after a quick coat of Tamiya primer this is the tail and that's looking really quite nice I think. I'm quite happy with that. Um, and if we look here as a, at a close-up of the wing, you can really see all of that really beautiful rivet detail now is standing out very, very nicely. Um, I've got to give it to HK. They did do well on this. This does look very nice indeed. So one of the purposes, of course, of using a primer is to spot any issues. And there's this little um, mold line here on the leading edge of the wing which needs to be removed. Uh, even though this was a, a one-piece wraparound wing, that is still there, but that's quite easy to sand off. And then there's a couple of other issues here with join lines. These are completely my fault. They just need filling and sanding and filling and sanding to be corrected. And once that was done, I gave everything a coat of uh, XF1 black. And this is what it looks like. This is starting to take shape. This is starting to look a little bit more like a Lancaster now, I feel. And here is the uh, main fuselage. This actually looks okay under light, but on the camera it looks a little bit patchy. And it's clearly going to need another, another coat just to even it out. Uh, the Bombay, and then again the wing, again looks quite patchy, 
It's, it's only had one light coat, so it needs a second coat over the top there, definitely. And of course, these Tamiya acrylics are really, really easily scratched. And it's, it's virtually impossible to, to manipulate these parts without hitting them on something. So I think what I'm going to need to do is to uh, give one more coat and then put a varnish coat down, even though it's not finished, just to protect it while I'm handling it. And of course, there are a few areas that need touching up, such as the edges of the uh, bodywork here in the wheelbase. Uh, I've painted the inside of the flaps with that uh, interior green color. Although I have made a small mistake up here in the top right corner, uh, that little triangle shape there, of course, is part of the uh, lower wing surface. It should be black, not green. Okay, and that is my progress so far. My next job is to give these pieces another coat of black. And then in the next video, I should be joining the two fuselage halves together and hopefully laying down some uh, brown and green camouflage as well. And in fact, the camouflage leads me to a question which I'd really like to hear your feedback on. Um, what color to use for RAF Dark Earth? I know that some people recommend XF52, Flat Earth, which is okay, but it's not quite right. Uh, other people mix um, Flat Earth with Red Brown. I don't really want to go for a mix because uh, just reproducing that mix is quite hard in the future. And other people recommend uh, Vallejo paints. I would quite like to give AK Real Colors a try, but I'm not sure I can get them in this part of the world. But if you know a good RAF Dark Earth color, then please do leave a comment below. And equally, if you have any suggestions about how I can glue that clear half to the opaque half, I would love to hear from you. Uh, PVA glue, I suspect, is not going to be strong enough, but obviously I don't want to use anything that's got a solvent, uh, which will fog the clear parts. So again, if you have any ideas, um, please do leave a comment below. I'd really appreciate your help. And uh, thank you for watching. Until next time.